What is going on miners? All right, this is my crypto mining trailer. Over there is the solar section of this trailer. This is my Antminer L7 from muskminers.com. Huge shout out to them. But today I wanna get this thing up and mining in here because this thing was heating my house and it's just way too freaking hot out now. So I need to get this thing situated inside the trailer. I have this eight inch accordion style tube. This is what we're gonna use and I'm actually going to utilize these three dome fans that I actually have mounted on the roof. As you can see, I blocked one off with this half inch uh, board. It's like foam board, basically. It's insulation, more or less. I think the R value is super low, but either way, it's made for like soundproofing. I'm gonna cut a hole in the center there and force this eight inch tube up through there. That way the hot air is forced out and doesn't kind of spill back into this section because I'm not gonna be running any of these fans and hot air rises. I really don't think it's necessary to turn the fans on, especially if I have this AC Infinity fan pumping all the heat out of this unit. So this is the Fruit Associates Shroud. If you guys haven't seen this video, go check it out. I'll leave a link above. Also, huge shout out to my man, Fully Electric, for sending this over. So let me get this thing cut into that thing. And while I do that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. As a crypto miner, have you ever wanted to own any of these non-mineable cryptocurrencies without going through the hassle of KYC, exchange fees, and or taxable events? Then look no further. Unminable.com provides over 75 different cryptocurrencies that are able to be acquired mining with your ASICs, mini box miners, GPUs, or even the CPU in your everyday PC. With speculative mining playing such a massive role in the crypto mining space, Unminable.com is the clear choice for most new miners and seasoned vets alike. Please go check out Unminable.com to make your crypto mining experience easier than ever. Wow, look at that. That actually worked out perfect. So I actually ended up cutting a separate square and then cutting out the two half circles and pinching it together in here. And that thing is just hanging and that is actually perfect so i'm gonna set this guy up pretty much on that bottom rack i think just for now and then i'm gonna tie in that uh accordion tube to the exhaust and we're gonna hook up this again this is the ac infinity eight inch fan this is what this fruit associate shroud is actually designed to use i did have a vivo sun eight inch fan that is apparently more wattage to run so i'm excited to kind of open this thing up and check it out man this thing's actually really good quality it comes with like a book and a bag you know that thing's serious. I don't know what the heck's going on here. What is it, like a fan controller? I'm gonna have to open that up in just a second. I went and got this, actually. I think I'm gonna sit that unit on here and the fan because, like, with the fan attached, it's actually super long and it wouldn't fit on this rack. So I think I'm gonna do that. And my man Fully Electric actually sent me over this trip light uh, PDU cable. So this is a C14 by just a normal 120 outlet. So that's pretty sweet. So I can actually plug this fan right here into that PDU. Super pumped about it. All right, let me get this thing out of the box. Okay, so this is everything it comes with inside the box. This is the only addition that he threw in there himself. So I'm gonna leave that down there and I wicked appreciate that. Thank you so much. This thing is kind of cool. It's like a USB-C controller. I don't understand what those uh, like speaker dots are for. That's kind of weird. I'm gonna have to look into this a little bit, but yeah, so there's like a cord USB-C, it's actually stupid long. Oh, so you can actually put this on the outside of the grow tent. Ah, that's what it's for, and these must be lights or something. Interesting, I'm gonna have to check that out, okay. Um, regardless, yeah, so this thing's gonna get plugged in into that uh, cable right there and then into my PDU, which should be fantastic. Um, and this fan, actually, so this thing, they're a little more expensive than the normal fans, but damn, the quality is good. This thing is like really well made. It looks really nice, to be honest. I'm really excited to see how much wattage this thing pulls. I'm gonna have to get a power meter of some sort to check that out. All right, we're all hooked up. AC Infinity fan right through the L7 and piped right up into the dome vent. Obviously, again, the fan's not gonna be on up there, just gonna be this one. So this right here is the USB-C that controls the fan. I already plugged it in to the PDU right there, just temporarily, as you can see, until I get my network uh, rack right there. We're gonna be just kind of letting this thing all float everywhere and not really cable manage, but check out how this thing works. So that was off, obviously this is slow. And it goes up in all these different kind of increments. There's like 10 here, which is super impressive. So I'm gonna have to check the wattage on this at a later date. I just don't have time to do it right now. 
but I do need to get this thing up and mining. So I need to plug in these other C13, C14 cables to this L7. And she's up and mining. Check it out. This thing is full bore. I have it on maximum right now just because I'm going to be running this thing on normal mode. I don't want to uh, low power mode for, you know, the VIPs. So I'm going to let this thing just run full bore. And then um, I'm going to have to monitor the temperatures. I don't know how good this fan is, but according to Foley Electric, this is one of the top line fans for this application. And uh, dude, it's awesome. I'm actually stoked because if you look right here, this is the same height as these ABS printed uh, shrouds. So you can mount this flush to the wall vertically, right like there, or I, when I build a wall, you know, kinda right here-ish, I can mount it right there and then run this through exactly like that, which would be pretty cool. And then I can do three ASICs more or less like that into the other two fans. That's if I ever get any more ASICs. I could always put another inline fan behind the server rack right here and pipe it into that with like the jazz miners and the mini box miners or whatever running. And then same thing over here, if I got another network rack, I could put it over here and do the same thing essentially on that side. I'm gonna monitor this and kind of see what it looks like in a little bit. So let's, uh, yeah, let's do that. All right, so this is the next day. This thing's still running full bore and these temperatures are in the 50s on the exhaust side, which is amazing. Even with the door closed, just sucking in the intake from there and there. So what I'm gonna do, is turn this down or to like, I don't know, two, two notches down, I guess. And I wanna go see what the temps are like that. I'm just hoping that it's still cool enough. I just don't want it to be like, there's no reason to run it on high speed and use all that wattage if this thing's literally in the 50 degrees for the temperatures. But overall, this thing, this design works fantastic. And I was actually thinking about it. The inline fans behind the server racks literally make no sense. I would just have to make a wall and turn on probably the top fan there and there or something just to have those two. These things only run at like 50 watts anyways. So just to have, you know, equal air going out and I'd have to block off those kind of like I did these dome vents right here with the plastic trash bag. I blocked those off so no air can suck in from this side. And obviously not having this door open will uh, minimize the dust that is actually on these iPolos. Oh, that's probably from me blowing the uh, leaf blower actually now that I think about it. But these filters that are in here, actually let me show you guys for anybody that doesn't really know, these pop off. And I do have these filters, that's kind of funny, a little water, but either way, I got these filters that are washable and I can just more or less clean them out whenever they get a little too dirty. So if you don't know, these are actually called gable vents and these things are like, I don't even know, 20 something inches tall. They gotta be just about two feet or so, probably by uh, a foot and a half wide if I had to guess. But these are the biggest ones I could actually find at Lowe's. Home Depot didn't have them to be honest, but they work fantastic for what I need anyways. And when the Octo Miners were in here, they worked great as well. But real quick, everything's closed up. I don't know if you guys can hear the air kind of getting sucked in through these things. It works fantastic, to be honest. So I can't wait for that hot aisle to be built. All right, let's go check the temp. All right, so I actually did check the temperatures. It was only 60 degrees with this thing on 80%. Now, I just put it back to 100% to see what it would come up with on the wattage. I actually have the L7 off. This is just checking to see. Now, 160 watts on high. I want to see what this will actually be when it's on the eighth step. So let's see, let's get it back there. I wanna see how much more efficient, if it is at all more efficient than the other inline fan that I have. Oh wow, so it dropped it to like 95. I was waiting for it to level off, but clearly 95 is it. Now let's see, so at this level, this L7 was again 60 degrees. Now I wanna do it halfway. Let's go halfway and just see what it'll be at. All right, right there. That's actually super quiet. I don't know. Low power mode, that should be good for it. 46 watts, that's it? Damn. All right, let's swap this. Not really the fan in general. I'm just going to plug this one in on the ground exactly like it is. But this is that uh, Vivo Home one that I was talking about. That's what I was using prior. So let me uh, swap this up real quick. So this is the control for this one. Are you guys ready for this? Let's see how much more awful this one is than the AC Infinity one. I'm gonna turn it all the way to low first. All right. 
Oh my gross. 390 watts? No. No way. It can't be that much worse. All right, I'm gonna put it on high. Let's see what high does right, oh, right before it shuts off. Right there. 420 watts for this fan. What? 420 watts for this thing? Are you joking? Yeah, we're gonna shut that off. Hold on. I gotta check that one more time. That's some, that's some bullshit. All right, plugged back in. Wait a minute. All right, let me put this back on high. That's insane. Let this thing ramp up all the way as high as it can. 420 watts for the other one. 160 watts on high. Are you shitting me? Wow, I was wasting so much goddamn money on that unit. That's insanity. So this is over double on the max setting because double this would be 320 and that thing was like 420. Wow, all right, well, just saying, don't buy these if you're looking for efficiency. That is freaking awful. All right, shout out to AC Infinity for freaking uh, being awesome. My man, fully electric again. Thank you so much because uh, I really didn't know these were that much more efficient. So anybody looking for an AC Infinity fan, I definitely recommend spending a little bit of extra money on it because you'll save it on your electric bill clearly. But all right, guys, that's it for today. I am going to wrap up and uh, kind of redesign this next week when my server rack comes. So stay tuned. Peace.